Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salat wa salam ala Sayyidin Mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. Assalamu alaikum once again. Alhamdulillah. Shyness is very, very, very important in our religion. And I want to remind everyone that increasingly it has diminishing importance in our society. In our religion, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned Al Hayau Khairun Kullu. Shyness embodies all good. Shyness embodies all good. If you think and reflect on the topic that you just heard delivered to you in such a penetrating way, using humor, using Quran, using popular culture, so that the message penetrates your consciousness. The issue of pornography is associated with a lack of shyness. Going through excesses with Facebook and the internet is associated with a lack of shyness. I know sisters who wear hijab in their real life and they have pictures on Facebook with no hijab. It's a lack of shyness. The issue of, if, if you name issue after issue, it can, it can be traced back to a lack of shyness. We have a, an interpretive tool that our scholars use. It's understanding the opposite of what's stated. So if the Prophet sallallahu al-Mukhalifa if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says shyness embodies all good, al haya wa khayrun kullu. What is the opposite of that? What, how do, what can we imply in opposition to that statement? Anyone? Yes, sister, you. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says shyness embodies all good, what can we understand as being the opposite of that statement? Thank you, sister. No, you're a brother. <laughs> a lack of shyness embodies all evil and bad. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaks the truth. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna li kulli deenin khuluq. Inna li kulli deenin khuluq. Wa khuluqu hadha deen al haya. Every religion has a defining characteristic. And the defining characteristic of this ummah is shyness. So don't be afraid to be shy. Muslims are people of shyness. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was shy. Do you know one way they tortured people in Abu Ghraib prison? And in fact, it's a torture technique to be used against Muslims. They made them walk naked in front of each other. This was a form of psychological torture that was used against your Muslim brothers. Shyness is the defining characteristic of this religion. Shyness is a part of our faith. 
الإيمان بدع والسبعون الشعبة أفضله أفضلها قول لا إله إلا الله وأدناها إماطة الأذى عن الطريق والحياء شعبة من شعب الإيمان Shyness or faith has 70 some odd branches The most virtuous of them is to remove the harmful thing from the path The lowest of them I'm sorry, the most virtuous of them is to proclaim La ilaha illallah The lowest of them is to remove the harmful thing from the path And shyness is a branch of the branches of faith Shyness is a branch of faith Shyness is part of our faith Shyness embodies all good Shyness is the defining characteristic of our religion do we have any doctors in here or medical students? Doctors, brothers, sisters, or medical students? None? They all go to ISNA? Oh. You're a doctor or medical student? Are you familiar with the Diagnostic and Statistical Man uh, Manual of Mental Disorders? Do you know what was added to it last year? Last year, shyness was added to the Diagnostic and Statistical Man uh, Manual of Mental Disorders as a Mental Disorder. So when the title, I don't know if those who put the program together were aware of that, this is indicative of how shyness is indeed a fading reality in our society. Shyness is one of the great sources of self-restraint. And self-restraint is one of the keys to paradise. So in other words, if you think about doing something, sin, I can't do that. Shyness is one of the key tools of self-restraint. What does Allah Ta'ala say about self-restraint? As for one who fears the time, they will stand before their Lord. Brothers and sisters, if you leave here with nothing more, because as we lose shyness, we knew you lose the ability to reflect. As we lose the re ability to reflect, our ability to reflect on our coming death is lost. Most people in this society live in oblivion to the reality of death. When some people are struck with a debilitating and possibly, possibly terminal disease, they're in shock. How could this happen? I was strong. I was healthy. I took my vitamins. I went to the gym. I did everything you were supposed to be, supposed to do rather, to be healthy and to live forever. How did I come down with this disease? Well, maybe it's because you're human. So death is a reality. Death is one of the critical aspects of our religion. Death is something we should reflect on because death helps us like shyness to restrain ourselves. When we don't think about death, we don't think about the accountability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will occur after our death. And so we don't restrain ourselves. When we think about death, we say, I can't steal this. I can't eat this. Drugs. I can't smoke this. I can't pop this. I can't look at this. Because one day I'm going to have to account to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. One day I'm going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything I did, everything I said in this world, I'm going to have to account for. And therefore he or she restrains their, their soul from those things it inclines towards. And the natural inclination of the soul is towards evil. In the nafs al that's why it's so easy to mess up. And it's so hard to go right sometimes. Because when we don't train and, and refine our soul, it's telling us 
Go on and drink it. You know you like it. Go on and smoke it. You know it makes you feel good. Go on and call her out. You know you love her. At least you think you do, for now. Let me tell you a love joke that has a serious lesson. Back in the day, you know, in the day before Muslims had paved streets, it was a mess, especially during the rainy season, especially in the marketplace, so the donkeys and the mules, an occasional cow is coming through the mud because it's rainy season, the roads aren't paved and they're dropping their loads and it's mixing up with the mud and a, a, a cabbage head that drops over here, mixing in, it's a mess. So one day a guy was in the marketplace and he saw a beautiful woman and he starts running after her, sloshing in the mud. <laughs> Sister, salamu alaikum, salamu alaikum. Sister's walking, going about her business and she hears, Sister, please. She turns around, sister, please, wait, wait. He catches up to her. <sighs> sister, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life, and I have to marry you. Just please say you'll marry me. My life will never be complete without you as my wife. You're so beautiful. You're like the stars in the sky. You're like the moon when it's full. And she says, Okay, I have to ask my father, but it's okay with me. If he says, okay, I'll marry you. Yes! Yes, life is good. Then she said, but if you saw my sister, if you think I'm beautiful, if you saw my sister, you wouldn't even look twice at me. He said, really, where is she at? <laughs> she said, she's right over there. So he turns around and she smacks him, he falls in the mud and the cow manure and he's, she's all, he's all messed up and he looks that up, up at her and she says, sister, why'd you do that? She said, because a lover never takes his eyes off of his beloved. There's a deeper lesson. Never look away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the mud and the manure of this world. Never look away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from towards the mud and the manure of this world. Because in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fulfillment and the beauty and the satisfaction that a strong relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings, there's no comparison. Nothing in this world can compare. So stay focused on Allah. Don't get caught up in all this confusion and maintain shyness. Don't be afraid to be shy. Even if this society turns away. When I was growing up, we had to sit. When we were in the company of adults, you didn't move. You were in deep trouble if you did. You were like, attention. Excuse me, son, what's your name? You looked around to Make sure your parents nodding. You could talk to them. Uh, my name is Ahmed. My name is John. Then you shut up again. Now people think it's cute to just get into adult conversations. Oh, look at my little boy. You know, he knows how to nah, bah, 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 bah. They think it's cute, you know, to tell an adult to shut up. Oh, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Smith. Most of them even do it. Mr. Ahmed. Ah, he's just a little feller. He'll get over it. It's cute. It wasn't cute when we were growing up. It would be like Janaza. <laughs> Everyone would understand. The police come by your house. Uh, there were reports of a child screaming in here. Well, officer, that child just told his mother to shut up. Oh, I see. Okay, well, if you ever have any problems with crime, just call me. I'm out. Now if you discipline a child, they're ready to take you to jail.
Now, if a, if a child is shy, it's a mental disorder. This is where we're heading as a society. So that which has been extolled as a virtue in our religion becomes a mental disorder. And why is it a mental disorder? Because Dow and Merck and Pfizer and Glasgow Klein Smith has 10 different drugs to treat it. It's a new market. But it's, for us, it's not a, about market shares. It's not about someone's perverted understanding of human nature. It's a part of our religion that we hold on to if the whole world lets go of it. These sisters are beautiful. Sister, hold on to your hijab if the whole world lets go. Because you're preserving, you're not just preserving Muslim teaching, you're preserving a critical part of our collective human heritage. There are times when other traditional women in many different societies, including uh, Christian societies, they wore hijab. They all let it go. If you let it go, Muslims don't lose, humanity loses. And it loses to what? It loses to this mon monocultural bulldozer that wants to bludgeon us all into its pathetic, dehumanizing submission so it can trample on us and turn us into a bunch of mindless consumers who, who goose step as our rights, our dignity, our, our minds, education are systematically stolen from us. Those things are part of our collective human heritage, the cultivation of our minds, the elevation of our spirits. People, and, and a lot of Muslims get caught up. There are Muslims who think Lil Wayne is someone to be idolized and imitated. There are Muslims pulling themselves in the skinny jeans. There are Muslims who are, who are affected by this degeneration that's being foisted upon us. No, we say we're going to be the pre preservers of human dignity. We're going to be the preservers of, of, of who, a community that values the real meaning of education, including spiritual education. We're going to be people who walk with dignity. As, our, as Allah Ta'ala instructs us in the Qur'an, we're going to be the people who hold on to healthy, wholesome values that made humanity who we are in the first place. And I'll stop here. Who are we? We're people who are alive in our spirit. You can be alive physically, but your spirit is dead. Allah Subh'anaHu or one of our poets said, لَيْسَ مَنْ مَا تَفَسْتَرَحَ بِالْمَيْتِ the living dead aren't those who physically expire. The living dead are, are, those, are those who are dead while they are living. Or the dead, rather, are not those who expire and die. Rather, the dead are those who are dead while they are living. Why? Because they're dead in their spirit. They have no hope. They're deflated and depressed. They have nothing to live for. But as long as you have breath in your body and you can say La ilaha illallah, you can make salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can say Allahu Akbar. You have something to live for because you have another breath that you can adorn with the remembrance of Allah. You have another breath that can earn you edger and thawab and reward when you meet your Lord. And so we have to be living. And what is living? To live is to be shy. It's from the same root. Haya wa hayatun. To emphasize. Hayaun wa hayatun is from the same roots. To be shy is to be alive. To be shy is to have life. And to have shyness removed from us is to be dead, not physically dead, spiritually dead. Because a person whose, whose heart has been tainted by pornography is spiritually dead. 
a person whose life is the remembrance of Allah has been removed from their life is spiritually dead. A person who can look at people being murdered indiscriminately is spiritually dead. How is the, the spirit is killed? People are spiritually alive, they don't kill each other. These people say, La ilaha illallah, and put bombs in public places. Attack people on the streets with wanton proof. These are spiritually dead people. They can say, La ilaha illallah. A tape recorder can say, La ilaha illallah. Push play. La ilaha illallah. It's dead spiritually. And that's spiritual death. Because a, a, a spiritually alive person can't indiscriminately kill. There's a book I want you all to read because it's extremely relevant in this, in this area. A book by Colonel David Grossman called On Killing. And it tells how video games were used to get normal human beings to kill reflexively. Up until World War II, including World War II, what percentage of soldiers in a battlefield situation who had an opportunity to kill someone actually did? What do you think? How many? 80%. That's a possibly an educated guess. Educated. As the guy said, I don't know why Junior's doing so bad in school. I done learned him everything I know. 80% brothers, any takers? Fifth, approximately 15%. You read the book, <laughs> or oh, you heard me talk about it before, or oh, you're just playing smart. 15%. They found, they took the, the guns at, from one of the early Civil War battlefields, or before that, Revolutionary War, they found 10 and 15 shots stacked up inside. In other words, they were faking like they were shooting and reloading. People were shooting in the air. How could people be from here to that couch, 15 meters away from each other, and they're shooting at each other all day, and they last all day? They're shooting in the air, in the ground. By Vietnam, what was the kill? They called the kill ratio by Vietnam. Over 90%. How did they do it? They did it with video games. What happened? In the interim, the social science revolution, Pavlonian response, Pavlov and his dogs, stimulus response, stimulus response. They did it with video games. And so those video games killed the soul of those soldiers. Those video games are killing our souls. Be shy. Turn away from all of these things. And as was stated, turn to the book of Allah. Turn to the remembrance of Allah. Turn to the service of your brothers and your sisters. Dedicate yourself to doing your part. Don't complain the world's so bad. Do your part to make it better. Do your part to make it better. Complaining's not going to get us anywhere. Don't despair. Don't give up hope. A believer is always optimistic. Not foolishly optimistic, but the glass is always half full. Only disbelieving people despair of mercy from Allah. So brothers and sisters, keep hope alive, be shy, keep shyness alive, it's a part of faith, it's the embodiment of all good, it's, it's, it's a branch of our faith, it's the defining characteristic of our religion, and then actualize that hope in action. Let the, uh, that shyness rather in action, allow that shyness to pull you back and instill self-restraint within you, live a good life, keep smiling, Salaam alaikum.